Good morning. It's Friday, and welcome to our morning devotions. Um, we have been in the book of Colossians, and we finished up chapter 1 yesterday. And as I have shared with you on many times, um, these morning devotions are birthed out of my morning devotions, and I simply share with you as God uh, speaks to me as I walk through different books and different studies. Having finished up chapter 1 yesterday, and this morning, with it being July the 3rd, tomorrow being July the 4th, a time for us to celebrate our independence and the birth of our nation, uh, God just began to stir my direction uh, uh, away from uh, Colossians, and we'll pick back up on Monday morning, Lord willing. And uh, but I just sensed in my heart, I wanted to go deeper. I had shared an article. The Lord allows me an opportunity, and the paper does, uh, to write an article each month for our local paper. And um, so it was my week this week, and I I actually wrote it on the topic of being a Christian patriot. But this morning, in my devotion time, I went deeper and began to, you're only limited to a certain amount of space in the paper. And so for me, I want to go deeper in that thought personally. As I see what's happening all around us, and people are uh, moving away from a love and devotion for our country, and then the question begins to come, can you be a follower of Jesus and still love our country? There are those out there that would say that becomes idolatry, that we are idolizing a nation over God. I would say absolutely not. I would say that you can love Jesus and love your country. I would say that when you love Jesus, we are commanded in his word to also love the place in which we live and to honor that. And I want to show you that this morning. So thank you for joining in. I see you there, Miss Vicki. Uh, Miss Whitney, God bless you. Barry, uh, Jean, and David, uh, Carol, God bless you. Brother Jim from Pigeon Forge, God bless you this morning, brother. Uh, Miss Melanie, see you there, as well as others that are joined in with us. Thank you. Um, I've not done a great job. It's been a very busy week, as I'm sure it has for you, um, and have not done a great job of coming back and saying hello. But if you're joining in today, please comment. I, I promise you, I'll do my very best to come in and to share with you and just say thank you. But I want to say from the very beginning, thank you for being a part of these morning devotions. I am humbled and I'm honored beyond belief. And I want to say thank you. Good morning, Marlene. I see you there. Thank you for joining in as well. So join me in a word of prayer. We're going to be in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 17, and then I'm going to look at a few other verses that God directed me to in this thought of Christian patriots. So pray with me. Father, speak to us now. As you have showed me some things this morning from my own heart, I needed clarity of, Lord, just the standing from your word on these issues. And God, I thank you for speaking to my heart. Help me to speak your truth to the people of God today. Uh, in this medium of social media, and we are grateful for this opportunity. Thank you for every person that's joined in. Would you encourage, would you minister, would you strengthen? And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you again for joining in. The question remains that I posed in the article, can a person be a Christian and a patriot? A Christian, of course, is someone who's a follower of Jesus, who have given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, has been forgiven of their sins, and have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, in Him alone, which is the whole basis of what we've been looking at in Colossians. And a patriot is someone who is who loves their country, devoted to their country. And I would say to you that absolutely... One can be a Christian and one can be a patriot at the same time. When you look at First Peter chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 17 to begin with. Listen to what Peter says. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, 
Fear God and honor the king. Fear God and honor the king. The interesting thing about Peter saying give honor, it means to respect, to give reverence to the king and therefore the those that would rule over you. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. It says to fear God, number one, let that be the number one relationship that we are a Christian. We follow Jesus. We love Jesus. We have given our life. He has saved our soul and we are on our way to heaven. And as we make that journey, though, we live in certain places. Uh, all of us live in different places. Some are in Georgia, some in West Virginia, some in other places that I know that uh, South Carolina and Texas uh, that log on and watch. Thank you for that. But as we do that, as we're here in the United States of America, Peter would say to honor the king, honor those that rule over you. Now, it'd be easy to say, well, that's easy, uh, but particularly if there's a godly king, uh, certainly that would be the case. Uh, but the reality is, when Peter wrote this, Nero was the emperor of Rome. He was the furthest thing from a godly, moral king. As a matter of fact, he had persecuted Christians. When these people that received this letter would read this, it would be so far away from even their own flesh to say, how can we honor the king? But as a Christian, we are to also, I believe, be a patriot and can love our nation and honor our nation. Does it mean it's perfect? Absolutely not. Does it mean it's flawed? Absolutely. There is certainly, we can look at all the things that could certainly be wrong. But I would say this, that when we think about the freedoms that we hold dear, and I, I'm a, a, I love to study history. Even this morning, I was reading and studying Bible verses that relate to uh, certain parts of American history. Uh, even when the, the pilgrims landed in the Mayflower Compact, as they founded the Mayflower Compact based upon uh, the furtherance of the Christian faith, one of the first acts that took place in the Continental Congress in 1774 was a prayer that was given and asking for God's divine favor upon this nation. Read the life of, of George Washington, of how God providentially saved this man so many times and would use him to guide the birth of this nation. And all throughout its history, God has shown his favor at certain times and certain ways. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But when I think about being a Christian and being a patriot, I want to say to you, that it is not only okay, but I think it's right to honor our king or honor our president and honor our nation. Now, there's many that would say, now, wait a minute. If you're standing for the attention of the flag or you're standing when a song is sung of God bless America or you give it attention when the national anthem is sung, then you're showing in some way hatred to others. I would say to you that by God's grace as a saved man, saved by God's amazing grace, the Bible tells me I do not have the right to be unkind. The Bible tells me I do not have the right to be to be uh, hate, hate anyone, no matter their color or their creed. But I'm telling you under God, I believe the Bible is very clear when it says we can honor our nation and we can stand and we can honor those. Well, see, when I see the flag, I think about all the way to the Revolutionary War of people that laid down their life so that you and I could have the freedom to worship. We could have the freedom to have a family, freedom to live in the world that we live in. And down through the ages, if men and women have laid their lives on the line, and I, you better believe, I, I'm getting emotional because I think about it. There's a freedom that I've got to preach, a freedom I've got to worship, a freedom I've got to be where I can and live where I want to live. And people have laid their lives down and still lay their lives down. You better believe I'm going to honor this nation. I'm commanded by God to fear him and to honor the king. But let's go a step further. What, what does it speak of? It's to be a Christian patriot, it means that we obey the laws. Peter would go on to say in verses 13, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be the king as supreme 
or unto governors and to them that would be sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that we do well doing that you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Paul would, also, Paul would also say this in Romans chapter number 13, that God has set aside the government, that we are to submit ourselves to the governmental authorities, and we are to honor and to obey the laws. I believe that not only can you be a Christian patriot, but we ought to be the best citizens of a nation. We are to be the ones that obey the laws and follow the laws. Did you know God set aside the government? God established the, the family there in the Garden of Eden. God established the church in Acts chapter 2 and also in Matthew 16. And God established the government when he told Moses, here was the laws they laid, or Noah, when, the, uh, when Noah come off the ark and they laid down some laws. And then Moses comes and lays down the framework of laws for the nation of Israel, which, by the way, the United States of America put the framework of their laws based upon the laws of God. Nobody wants to talk about that, but it's the truth. And then we see in the New Testament where Paul would say, God has established the government to keep laws because God knows in our sinful condition there will be a need to have restraint and to have laws. We are to obey the laws. But we're living in a time of lawlessness. We're living in a time when, when people will, will go against. And I'm not talking about the, listen, we've all broke the laws of, of the speed limit. There's things that we all, but I'm talking about a blatant disrespect for the law. Listen, child of God, that is a symbol and a sign of the times we're living in. And it shows the return of Christ is coming soon. But for you and I, as, as Christian patriots, we're called to obey the laws. And God, listen, God has put the government in place. Listen to what, I just need to read it. I just need to read it. Y'all good, everybody? Y'all all right? I just feel like I'm at church right now. I'm just kind of talking and sharing with God's people. And uh, Romans chapter 13, listen to what he says. For whosoever therefore will shift the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to do good works, but to evil. Will thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. In other words, just do right. Do right, for he is a minister of God to thee for good. The government is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou wilt do what is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. We're talking about keeping the law, and those that break the law, there are there's, there's to be there is to be punishment, and there is to be due process. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. We don't live in a perfect world. But you and I as Christian patriots, number two, we're to pray. We're to pray. We're, we're, we're to pray. Listen, First Timothy says, pray for those in authority over us. Pray for, for our leaders. Pray for our, I mean, take pot shots at the president. And if you, I mean, uh, we, we, look, look, pray for the man. Pray for him. Pray for Mike Pence. Pray for our governor. Pray for those in, pray for your local officials. I live. We, we we've got folks in our church that are counseling and and and, and that I pray for them. I, I want to lift. The, they they need wisdom, but the Bible also tells me in in Jeremiah, when the nation of Israel was in bondage to a to a, a pagan land, he said, "Pray for the peace of that city." That's right. Pray for the peace of that city, and then he said, "Build gardens, build homes. When you do right to your city, you'll be blessed." And he goes on to talk about also in Romans 13, pay our taxes. Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, and to God's what is God's. But also talks about be ready to do good works. It speaks of being involved in the community, being engaged in the community. Being that Christian patriot is more than just saying, I love America, but it is being engaged. And I know I need to do more of that. Be engaged in what's happening. And, and, and there's been times that I have... There's been times that I've been shot down, um, very well documented when I first came here, and we took some stands about um, some some things were happening at the school, and then as they began to try to bring alcohol into our county, 
and we took a stand and the vote went down and uh, we, we lost the vote, but we took a stand. And it's easy. Now listen, here, here's why sometimes I've, I've backed off because when, when you get whipped enough times, you don't want to get back up there. But under God, if there was ever a time that we need to stand for what's right and we need to make our voices heard. And I'm going to tell you what else you need to do. You need to vote. You need to go out there and vote. Say, well, why? I, I, as a Christian, listen, people died to give you that right. You need to go out there and vote. And then if God leads you, and many of you he is, to, to run for public office or to be engaged in the, in, in the culture, do what God would have you to do. But let's talk about this one aspect that's happening right now, civil disobedience. Preacher, what about as a Christian patriot when the laws of this land would go against what we stand for? I'm telling you, we're seeing a lot of disobedience right now in our country. And it's not bringing honor to the Lord, and it's not bringing honor to our nation. Did you know that even within our Constitution, the First Amendment gives the right to protest? Listen to the wording, peaceful protest. It gives the right to free speech, but it doesn't give me the right to say anything that I want to and run into a crowded theater and yell the word fire. It gives the right for me to be able to worship as I see fit. The government will not tell me uh, what church I have to worship under. There is rights there, but it's peaceful protest. So let's talk about as a Christian. The Bible says in the New Testament, when they told Peter and James they could no longer preach the name of Jesus, Peter said this, It is better for us to obey God than man. What Peter was saying is we, we will respect the laws, but when those laws come against the word of God, we will stand on the word of God. But I want you to notice with me as I studied this morning and God in a fresh way reminded me, and my dad and I talked about it some last night, and it stirred me as I began to study through the passages again for my own benefit to be reminded there are times throughout the Old Testament that we see, and even in the New Testament, when there was a moment when the king, the ruler, and those in charge would go against the laws of God and the word of God, and they would stand in civil disobedience. But I want you to notice Daniel. When Daniel was, was said, you have to eat the, the king's meat and drink the king's wine, the Bible said Daniel purposed in his heart he would not defile himself with those things, and he would not defile his heart. But Daniel never dishonored the king's men. Daniel purposely went and said and asked, petitioned, and was 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 gracious. And, and even, they, even though they wanted to go against, he was gracious. Even when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't cause a big scene. The scene was brought to them. They simply did not bow. And the men brought the attention. They didn't bring the attention to themselves. They just simply stood and would not bow to the king's image. How about Daniel? In, in Daniel chapter 6, when they said, Daniel, the law was passed. And the Bible says Daniel didn't, Daniel didn't start praying because the law got passed. He had been praying. When he found the law had passed, he just kept doing what he was doing. But he never once said an ill word against the king, even though the king threw him in the lion's den. And the next morning when the king found him, he said, O king, live forever. See, listen, there will be times that we may have to go against when if they were to tell me that I can't preach this Bible and I can't stand for truth and they would arrest me, stay with me, though. Just like the disciples, just like Daniel, there are consequences that we must face. But at the same time, never dishonor or deface or do anything that would be destructive. You never see the disciples that would, when they were told they could not preach the name of Jesus, they still preached the name of Jesus, but they didn't go and, and, and try to tear apart the Sanhedrin and rip apart the temple and go and, 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 and damage the temple or damage the cities. Paul would be thrown in prison for preaching the name of Christ, but he never once went to damage a city as a result of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To be a Christian patriot there may come a time that we have civil disobedience, but we do it still by honoring where we're at and honoring the Lord. What's happening now is complete and total lawlessness, and it does not honor, the, honor God or honor this nation. The question is, 
Can I be a Christian and a patriot? And I would say to you, absolutely. Don't don't let people listen. I, I I've let folks probably at times just kind of quiet me down a little bit because I love this nation. I thank God for the forefathers who stood and pledged their 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 life, their their very being to to fight. I thank God for the for the farmers that left their farms and fought for the freedom that we have. I thank God for many of you who who have fought and stood. I thank God for this for our law enforcement. I I thank God for this for this nation stand for the flag. Don't be afraid and honor the Lord. And by the way, said preacher, if you want to look at anything, you could look at anything as hatred if you wanted to. But I don't see it that way. As a matter of fact, I think if a man saved the Bible tells me I do not have the right to be unkind. The Bible tells me that I'm to love everyone. The Bible tells me that every single life is precious before God. I still love the old song, red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. Amen. Amen. I thank God that Jesus loves me not because of the color of my skin, not because of where I was raised, not because of where I live. Jesus loves me because he loved me before I was ever born. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when I stand and love my country, I'm not hating anyone. I'm honoring this nation. I'm honoring this place and this land that I love. I'm honoring those that have stood for freedom. I'm honoring those that have given their life and have risked their life that I could have the freedoms that I enjoy. So tomorrow, when you enjoy that time with family and friends and maybe some fireworks and, and maybe some cookouts, I don't know what you might do. I know COVID has slowed some of that down a little bit. Would you take time to pause and give God praise for the land that we live in? Give God praise for blessing us with the freedoms that we enjoy. Give God praise and thank Him for, for the favor that He's shown. And then pause and ask God to show His favor again to this nation. Matter of fact, if I believe if there's going to be a change and a turn in this nation... My uh, sweet, loving mama teen last night, as we were talking about this on the front porch, don't you love the front porch discussions? I do. <laughs> A lot of things can be ciphered out. Do you think it'll ever change for it is? I don't know. Only God does. I believe we're living in the last days. I believe these things that are happening are pointing to the return of Christ like never before. But I believe this, with everything within me, if there will come a turn in this nation to where God would, would desire to bless us and see his favor and see a return to the Judeo-Christian values that have founded this nation and made it strong, it will not come from the laws that are passed. It will not come from the White House. It will certainly not come from the Supreme Court anymore, it seems. No, no, no. It'll come from your house and my house. It'll come from the communities. It'll come from God's house. It'll come when Christian patriots fear God and honor the nation. It'll come when Christian patriots pray and seek the face of God. It'll come when Christian patriots say, we'll let our voice be heard that we can love God and love this nation. It'll come when we seek the heart of God to say, God, help me to be salt and light and to make a difference in this world. Oh, God, help us. And may God show favor on this nation. Well, I've had a lot of this in me for quite some time now. And I don't know where you stand. I, I, my prayer is that um, you've heard my heart, but I've tried my very best to base everything I've said in the Word of God. 
And God helped me again this morning in my own personal time to solidify my stance of what I believe of what's happening. Listen, it's got to come from God's Word. You're going to hear me say that often if you, if, you, if you continue staying with me as we go through these devotions. we got to base what we believe and where we stand on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Can I encourage you to enjoy this weekend, but give God praise. And, and, and hey, if you see somebody in law enforcement or somebody in the military, thank them. Better yet, if you're in a restaurant, buy their supper, buy their meal. And if you have an opportunity to stand and, and, and give allegiance and just say, hey, we love this nation, do so. But God help us to be Christian patriots. And as doing so, we'll be better citizens for a nation that we deeply love. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for your word this morning, speaking directly to my heart. Help me to be the Christian patriot I need to be. Help me to stand true to your word and to your way. Help me to fear you, but also honor the king. And God, I thank you for those that have laid their life down. I thank you for those that have served many. Lord, I know Brother Jim served and others, God, served. And I thank you for them and, and others in law enforcement. We thank you for them. And we do pray this morning for Donald Trump. We do pray for Mike Pence. We do pray, Father. I, I thank you for their leadership. I thank you for their heart for this nation. Uh, Lord, I pray for Brian Kemp. I pray, God, for our county commissioners, Lord, our, uh, one of our own there at Center Baptist. We pray for Craig Bryant and all those in leadership, Father. We pray for those that are running, God, to be a part that I know that watch. We ask you your grace upon them as they're getting involved. They're stepping in there, Father, and help us all, God. And, Lord, would you show your favor upon this nation like never before. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part. God bless each one of you. Thank you for joining in this morning. I see several of you, Brother David, Miss Joyce. God bless you. Thank you, uh, each one of you. Thank you for joining in. Um, hey, if you are uh, joining in, uh, leave a comment. I'd love to come back and say hello to you. If um, you've got a prayer need, I'd love to pray with you. And can I encourage you? Um, not because it's me, but because I believe the Word of God was shared today about what it means to be a Christian patriot. Would you share this today? Would you share this Word today? In the world we're living in, the Word of God needs to be clear on this. And we've tried in a very brief time, I know in our time, uh, to share. But would you share this on your page today and let others know about what the Word of God says about being a Christian patriot. And may God bless you today. And may God bless you as you have time with your family and friends. And, and may the Lord bless America. May God show his favor and grace. And may God help us to be the Christian patriots we need to be. God bless you. I, I look forward to joining back in Colossians as we come together um, and, and have time together in Colossians. And so uh, pray the Lord to bless you. God bless you, Brother Jim. Enjoy your time. Thank you for your service, my friend. And I, God bless you for it. And each one of you, thank you for being a part. Have a great weekend. Hey, for Center Baptist folks, remember, 9 o'clock, one service, drive-in service. We'll be online as well. And we're going to talk about the power of the church, even as it relates to our nation. And I pray you'll join us uh, live at 9 o'clock online and then in the drive-in service as well at 9 o'clock. May the Lord bless you. Till next time, have a great day.